am Criswell. For many years I have told you the almost unbelievable related the unreal and showed it to be more than fact. Now I tell you a tale of the threshold people. So astounding that some of you may think this is a story of those in the twilight time. Once human, now monsters in a world between the living and the dead. Monsters to be pitied. Monsters to be despised. I must take you to your town, any town, a police station. Activity of the day or night. Where do I report a stolen car? Down at the end of the hall, ma'am, room eight. Thank you. Activity, some of which the police are quite willing to admit. I got a purse man here. What's your name? John Doe. Said it's John Doe. Okay, John Doe. Yes. All right. Sign your real name right here. I can't sign. I can't write. Write your real name. Make it fast. Right. Get nervous. You get through with them. Take them down. Throw them in a cell. Delta. Yes, sir. You take Mr. and Mrs. Edward down to the waiting room. Right, sir. Uh, I want to thank you for all your help, uh, Sergeant Crandall. Well, that's what we're here for, sir. Oh, it was a nightmare of horror. Oh, oh there, there now, Martha. There, there now. Oh, uh, but we're, we're going now. We're going now. We'll have an ambulance here in a little while. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, uh, the police will take care of everything. Oh, that horrible face and those long fingers. Oh, I'll never forget it, the longest day that I lived. There, there, now, come on now, Karen, come on to me. All right, sir, sir, thank you. Take now, right down the hall. All right, there, take it easy. This is how it began, an incident the police were fearful to admit. Your daily newspapers, radio, and television dares to relate the latest in juvenile delinquency. it seems juvenile delinquency is a major problem of our law enforcement officers. But is this the major horror of our time? Is this violence and terror the small few perpetrate? The most horrible, terrifying of all crimes our civil servants must investigate? The National Safety Council keeps accurate records on highway fatalities. They can even predict how many deaths will come from a drunken holiday weekend.
But what records are kept? What information is there? How many of you know the horror, the terror? I will now reveal to you. The work of a maniac was credited for the murder of this boy and girl. You remember the stories your newspapers carried of the incident. But let us see what really happened. Paul! Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, the little hospital man have sent over an ambulance. For the old couple, huh? That's right. I thought something was mighty wrong the way they raced in here. White as a sheet. The old woman looked like she'd seen a ghost. Well, maybe they both did. Captain! Uh, yes, sir? Where's Bradford? I got a hold of him, Inspector Robbins, but uh, he isn't here. I'm not blind. I can see he's not here. But when he does get here, send him in here. Yes, sir. Boy, it's sure cold in Inspector Robbins' office tonight. Well, maybe he's got a cold problem. Hey, you better get on the radio about that ambulance. Good is on the air right now. Thank you very much. You're welcome, man. Well, speak of the devil. Well, my, don't we look pretty tonight? Good oh, boy. Jealousy will get you nowhere. What's your inspector want? Well, why don't you just tippy toe in there and find out? Well, now that you mention it, I just might do that. Yeah. Inspector Robbins, Lieutenant Bradford's outside. Send him in. Yes, sir. Come in here. Now, your call got me just as I was getting out of the shower. Now, what's so important that it couldn't wait until tomorrow? Yeah. Tell him I have to wait a while. Oh, and Crandall, don't call me until I get through with Bradford. Well, what the well-dressed police lieutenant will wear. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, but I can't see no place to carry a gun. Who needs a gun at an opera opening? It's all according to who's singing. I wasn't thinking about opera. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. Let's not get any ideas. It shouldn't take you too long. Oh, no. Not on your life. Not tonight. It's right down your line. Be a cinch. Besides, there's nobody else I can send on this type of investigation. Now, look, Inspector. I've had these tickets for three months. And that curtain goes up in exactly one hour. And Sally's waiting out in the car. If I remember correctly, Sally's apartment is on the way over here. And her apartment will be on the way back. You can drop her off. Go over my dead body? Well, I prefer it the other way. Look, I'm not going. You're a cop. You'll go. Look, why me? Why not Lewis or Crandall or Smitherington? Hey, Smitherington. There's a boy for you. Just the type. He's a real go-getter. Give me a match. And as I said before, 
You're the only one with experience along these lines. What lines? It could be ghosts. Oh, come on now, Inspector. That's right, the old house on Willis Lake. Uh, what happened? A little while ago, a farmer's wife charged in here. It seems they've taken a shortcut over the old road to Willis Lake. Oh, you mean the road that goes by that old house I investigated a few years ago? The one that was destroyed by lightning? That's right. You knew someone rebuilt it, didn't you? No, I didn't. Well, somebody did. Anyway, as the old couple drove along, a storm was coming up. You know how bad that road is, even at best. It makes me nervous. Why did you ever take a road like this? Why didn't you stay on the main highway? Well, uh, taking that shortcut over the mountains knocked off about 10 miles off our trip. Oh, of all the nights for Elba to meet us. Well, the doc said my sister was in bad shape. <laughs> what else could we do? Oh, I know, I know, but driving in this storm weather doesn't help my nerves. Well, it ain't storming yet. No, but I bet it will be before we cross this here mountain. Oh, stop your friend. I'm doing the driving, and I know what I'm doing. Gull, darn it. It's dark as pitch out there. I can't see a thing. Where are we? Well, we passed that old Rockdale Cemetery about five minutes ago. Must be getting near that old house at Willow's Lake. Willow's Lake? You mean that place where the mad doctor made monsters? Oh, ain't no use getting excited. The doctor and the monsters are... Destroyed years ago by lightning. sightings around here lately. It's been going on for months. How come I haven't heard about this before? You're usually anxious to give me these screwball assignments. Oh, I sent a man out there the first time. His report came back negative. 
So I figured these stories piling up about the old place since the doctor and his monsters were killed was just a figment of somebody's wild imagination. But now after this incident, I'm not so sure. Anyway, I want you to go out there and have a look around. And it has to be tonight, huh? Now, Lieutenant, any kid knows that ghosts only operate at night. Yeah, so I heard. So that's why you've got to go out there and find out once and for all. You better take somebody with you just in case you do run into something. Well, I'm not expecting anything, but you're the boss. Anybody you want special? No, I'll give you the honor of selecting someone. All right, take Kelton. Kelton? Well, if I was expecting any trouble, he'd be the last man I'd want. And I suppose under the circumstances, though, he's as good as anybody. Kelton. Yes, sir? Come in here. Uh, yes, sir? I want you to accompany Lieutenant Bradford. Uh, yes, sir. But isn't it kind of late to rent a full dress suit? Don't crack wise with me, Kelton. Yes, sir. Uh, where are we going? Just bring a patrol car around front. You're going out to the old house on Willis Lake. Yes, sir. The old house on Willow's Lake? You mean where all those monsters come from? You heard me. No buts about it. Get going. Yes, sir. Cal. Yes, sir. Get an extra box of 38s and take them with you. You think we're going to need them? Just in case, Kelton. Just in case. I don't think I'm going to like this. Kelton, will you please just carry out the orders? Monsters. Space people. Mad doctors. They didn't teach me about such things in the police academy. And yet that's all I've been assigned to since I became on active duty. Why do I always get picked for these screwy details all the time? I resigned. Kelton, so help me. If you don't get the hell out of here, you're all against me. The whole police force is against me. The whole city is against me. I resign. If he ever passed a police examination, I'll never know. Oh, well, get in touch with me as soon as you return. Okay. Even if I'm at home, get to me first. Before you make out any reports, I don't want the police department to look foolish. This could ruin us, you know. You don't want the police department to look foolish. What do you think I'm going to look like, chasing around after a ghost in this full dress suit? <laughs> Brad, look the place over. The ground, the old cemetery, the old house. This could be serious, more serious than we think. So don't leave yourself open in case of any emergency. Now, Inspector, don't worry about me. Go to it. I'll go ahead in my car and make sure Kelton gets out there that radio car. Daniel Bradford, 40 years of age, 15 years with the department. In the official files, he is a lieutenant in charge of special investigations, a broad description of his actual duties. But confidentially, although the department cannot and will not admit it, Lieutenant Daniel Bradford is a ghost chaser. Supernatural is a strange profession for any police officer, but even with years of experience in this field, Lieutenant Bradford could not know strange eyes were watching his every move, strange eyes that were the actual cause of his returning to the old house on Willows Lake.
That clapper on the door was meant for announcing visitors. I'm afraid I owe you an apology. Obviously. What is the meaning of this intrusion on our privacy? There are others in this house? Many. The living and those gone beyond, the dead. But I can't see where that's any of your affair. The living and the dead? Well, yes. Yes. Then I found the right place at last. Perhaps I've been hasty in assailing you. Maybe you've come for a consultation of the loved one who has passed on. Well, would, would I seek this sanctuary for any other reason? I see no other reason. I am Dr. Atula, your host. My name is Bradford, Dan Bradford. Our resurrection chamber is on the opposite side of the house, far below the ground level. Would you follow me, please? I've had it. I quit. Haven't you taken off for the Willis Lake yet? Nobody will give me a patrol car. I've had a busy day, Kelton. I haven't had a bite to eat since noon. Now it's nearly midnight. I want to go home where my wife of some 15 years has a wonderful rope waiting for me. What do you mean you can't get a patrol car? Captain Miles, put a cleanup, a fix-up on all excess patrol cars. Who's on duty at the carpool tonight? Sergeant Carlos. Yeah, Inspector Robbins. I want a patrol car out front immediately. Kelton will pick it up. Well, you're an inspector. so I don't get stopped again. You must watch your step. The passage ahead will be very dark. cemetery tower. We must hurry on to the others. Strange things are said to happen when the tower bell tolls midnight. in the ancient cemetery. Another strange incident was about to happen. <coughs> the untrained mind, it is the scream of the white ghost. She died two centuries ago. The first I raised from the other side of the grave. She has never left in all these years. dark passageways and weird sounds are disturbing. I'm not used to it. Give yourself time, Mr. Bradford. You will learn. You should have stayed with the others, Mr. Darmore. So many nights of waiting. I know. It's been months since I discussed the raising my dear departed Lucille. When may I see her again? Those that are gone longer are much more difficult to raise. However, I'm in touch with the spirit world, and you may see your wife on the second Friday of the fifth month. Well, that's in two days. Even now, 
she rests in this room. Well, I doubted your word, Dr. Ackland. But I must see her once more. And see her you shall. Patience is the only rewarding virtue. May I look into the room? If you wish, but only from the doorway. In just a moment. Her rest must not be disturbed. I understand. <laughs> Even now, life is being restored to her through the scented candles, the spices, the oils, and a shroud from the ancient tombs of Egypt. I believe you, Doctor. Now you may return to the others and witness the joy of another glorious arising. Yes, Dr. Ackerman. Shall we also go? An arising is expensive. Each arising has its own problem. If only I could be of service without remuneration, I only trust that I may be of help to you soon, Mr. Bradford. I'm sure you will, Dr. Ackerman. The house was not all that remained of the old scientist horrors. Patrolman Kelton arrived at the old house, only to find Lieutenant Bradford's car empty and Lieutenant Bradford nowhere to be seen. Patrolman Paul Kelton, 29 years of age, four years with the department, eager for the glory of the uniform, but wide-eyed with fear at the thought of actually being on special duty. Unfortunately, though eager, not what the department usually looks for in their officers. Headquarters, Kelvin's here. Car four to headquarters, Kelvin here. What do you want now, Kelvin? Get me Inspector Robbins, and quick. He went home half an hour ago. Get him. Said he wasn't to be disturbed anymore tonight, except by Lieutenant Bradford. Tell him to send me some help. I just need some ghosts out here. Who's been spiking your beet juice? This is no time for silly jokes. Tell Inspector Robbins what I said. Tell him I've been all over the whole place. Nobody's here except those ghosts. Lieutenant Bradford car is right next to mine. But he ain't no place to be found. And I'll be damned if I'm going to that haunted house alone. It's a nest of haunts. It's a, a whole mess of them. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'll do what I can. Do, do it now. Look, I can get killed around here. Ted, come in here a minute. Give this to Sergeant Crandall. This guy's nuts. Since Mrs. Wingate Yates Foster, through my benevolent society, wishes the arising of her dear departed husband, Wingate, we tonight will bring him from that which was thought to be his final resting place. Through my 
my powers of the supernatural. I, and I alone, can bring him to this room tonight. From that place in the deep blackness of death, from which no visitor is to return, where the sun is seen to rise, and the sun is seen to set, where the gracious moon comes from the east in its long journey across the night sky to the west, Wingate Foster, through the powers of Dr. Acula, will again be permitted to walk. questions wished to be answered by those left behind can only be answered by those gone on, those with the all-seeing eyes. Such is our desire tonight for Mrs. Wingate Yates Foster. of mortal existence will die. Only the spiritual light may prevail within this room. We are waiting, O oh spirits of the dark world beyond. We are waiting your judgment, your all-glorious knowledge of truth and righteousness.
strong to take care of you, to handle your business, your personal affairs. He will do fine things for those remaining years until you join with me here in the afterworld. He will be of great inspiration and help. Be good to him. Be kind. Permit him a free hand in leading you all. A hand strong in the way of truth. A truth directed by all that you hold right. A truth which all those of the dark world believe. Now I grow weary, weak. The strain of spanning the everlasting is so tired. How say you, Maud? Maud, tell us. I'm so happy you feel this way, Wingate. It means so much to me. And I've been so lonely all these years alone. I leave now. Until we meet again, come to me with your problems, and I will guide you. Believe in me, and believe in our new friend of your world, Dr. Acton. Your complete faith in him is all important for our meeting in your world. Remember, Maud, dear, do all I have directed until we meet here in my world. Goodbye for now, dear. The momentary distraction of Dr. Acula gave him time to locate one of the many secret doors in the draped room. Lieutenant Bradford had seen the workings of Dr. Acula in the meeting. Now he must find proof of this vicious, crooked racket which preys on the innocent. Excuse me, please. What do you want? Oh, I'm frightened. Oh. Of what? There's a policeman hanging around outside. So what? There have been policemen on the grounds before. They haven't found anything and they won't. But there's something more. There's something else out there. Something I don't understand. It scared me nearly to death. And if you don't stop screaming out there, you'll have us all in the soup. I tell you, I was frightened. Of what? That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's something else out there. I'd noticed it several times tonight, and then suddenly I, I saw it up close. Saw what? I, I, I think ghosts. Sheila, you're a fool. I am the one that creates ghosts around here. Me, me, nobody else. Don't tell me my pitch is having its effect on you, too. I've seen them in the brush in a cemetery. Black shapes that, that, that melt into the fog. Even that policeman saw one a little while ago. He emptied his pistol at it. I tell you, I'm scared. Nobody's going to ruin this setup for me. I've got this Wingate Foster dame right where I want her. She'll be passing the cash out so fast to that gigolo, he won't be able to grab it. And he's splitting the take with me. It'll be a big payoff from now on. Darmore's ready to be taken, too just as soon as I produce his Lucille in a couple of days. You're supposed to be scaring the people away from here, not letting them scare you. Now get ready for your performance. And oh yeah, Jeffrey is Lucille's cousin, also dead. Call for him tonight. That'll also impress Darmore. Now here's what you do. With Dr. Acula absent, Lieutenant Bradford saw the chance to make his next move. He entered into a hall he did not remember from his previous visit there. Tony. Where's Mr. 
Bradford. I don't know. Find Lobo and send him to me immediately. Yes, Ty, Ty, I don't. Lieutenant Bradford found the staircase, a staircase he remembered so well from the days long ago when he had been investigating the mad scientist and his monsters. The skylight where he once entered years ago now was barred, foiling entry or exit. He remembered the cold, clammy sensation of the railing, cold, clammy, like the dead. Yes, the railing was the same as he remembered it, perhaps colder, perhaps more startling. His mind fought to dwell in the present, yet it continued to deal with the past. One could almost read his thoughts. It's only a metal railing. Huh. Yeah, probably this Dr. Ackler character has that railing rigged up, too. Now, if I remember right, the floor above has a lot of storerooms. I think I can find something there to go on. Well, that's strange. The ringing of the staircase is so much louder at night than during the day. Dr. Ackler's storeroom. Lighting equipment, props, scenery, sets, an old organ. And what a theater group could do with these. Ten of them, all from Kelton. Yeah, operations been trying to find you for over an hour. Yeah, I didn't go straight home. Top of the DA's house. I wonder what that fool Kelton is doing now. him into. Well, according to operations, he was pretty excited. Will you show me a day he's not excited? Claims to have shot at something. Yeah, it's probably his own shadow. What are we going to do? So what are we going to do? We're going to wait for him to make a report. Get me back to the office this time of night. You know, if Kelton had any stripes, I'd take him away from him. I think I'll promote him a set so I can do just that. Now, you got to admit there's more to it than meets the eye. Why do you say that? I just don't think you'd send Bradford out on a wild goose chase if there wasn't. Yeah, I know. I know, Crandall. Get out there. Make sure it isn't Kelton's hallucinations again. Right. And remember, we've got to keep this away from the newspapers until we know what we're looking for. Get right. your information from Bradford and not Kelton. That goes without saying. Well, Crandall, just a minute. Maybe I should go with you. I have to stick around here all night anyway. Oh, good. I'd be happy for your company. Besides, you know this area better than I do. All right, let's go. Change much in all these years. The old scientist control room used to be over here. Wonder what it's used for now. It's not locked.
on just another of Dr. Ackler's gimmicks. What a strange look there is to that face. I wonder what it's made of. Gotta give him credit. He uses good material. Strange. If I didn't know better, I could swear she was breathing. Well, I understand undertakers have a way of doing that. It's really lifelike. It must be controlled by the room downstairs. Even the skin feels real. Say, I wonder if this could be a fancy type of embalming job. Oh, well, back to work. A genius. Yes, Lieutenant Bradford. More than you'll ever know. Mr. Bradford. It's good to see you're all right. We were disturbed. You might have become lost in our corridors. It became stuck in the chamber, and I wanted a breath of fresh air. Well, I couldn't find my way back to the chamber, or back to the outside either, for that matter. I wonder why you really went into the corridors. I just told you. Sure you did. Now, what's this all about? It is my suggestion you don't struggle too violently. Lobo could break your back without trying. <laughs> it's the kindness to hold still while I search you. Well, it doesn't look like I can do much about it. Oh, this is interesting. I wonder what else we can find. <laughs> Lieutenant Bradford, why should the police be interested in me? What is your real purpose in coming here? <laughs> Earlier tonight, an elderly couple were driving through the grounds near here. They claim they saw a ghost and reported it to the police department. Oh, you've had experience with ghosts. I've had experience with this house before. The old scientist and his monsters. Lova here served him well. He was almost burned to death when fire destroyed the laboratory above. So? Where do we go from here? It's regrettable you don't go anywhere. Oh, you're going to kill me, huh? What would you do if you were in my position? That's rather foolish, you know. What makes you think you can get away with a thing like that? I've gotten away with it before. Come, Lobo, we'll take him to the mortuary room. <laughs> Get the intruder. Go!
Again, a salute to the Prince of Darkness. Always there is an unbeliever to file a supernatural. The unbeliever is a scourge to the world. Down with them wherever they may be. The will of the Prince of Darkness shall be done. Lieutenant Bradford couldn't know what he would find in this room. But he had seen Lobo wounded, and the trail of blood led across the room toward the coffin at the back wall. scheduled descent into the everlasting pit of darkness. Peace go with you, my friends. Come, Maud. Thank you, Dr. Acula. Dr. Acula? Oh, yes, Mr. Darmore. Those, uh, those disturbances, they won't harm the rising of my dear Lucille? Nothing can stop the raising of the dead once my powers contacted them. Well, that's beginning to worry. Faith is of the utmost importance in raising the dead, Mr. Darmore. There have been times of late when I feared you to be losing yours. Oh, no, no, it isn't that at all. It's just that uh, I was a bit unnerved. That policeman shooting and all. Well, the man was undoubtedly mad. It must have been that way. Hmm. This I hope will restore your complete confidence in me. Whatever it is, it will be of aid to your beloved Lucille. Good night, Mr. Darmore. Good night, Dr. Jack. Right. 
the guy was a giant, almost as big as a house. And when he hit me, I felt like I ran right into a mountain. <laughs> I know what you mean. I tangled him a few minutes ago myself. How do I get beat up by these ghouls? You know, sometimes I feel that I'm the whipping boy of the whole police force. Well, we'll go into that later. Right now, I want to find a way out of here and get to that patrol car and radio for some help. I radioed a dozen times. Yeah, well, I'll try this time. You mind if I rest a minute and then I'll be ready? Okay, I'll take a look around. Still worried? Ten thousand dollars. It helps to soothe my nerves rather quickly. <laughs> Things are going so well around here, I hate to leave the old place. We're leaving? Just as fast as we can get out of here. But where are we going? Oh, we'll find another spook house near an old cemetery and set up shop again. Any place away from here, a long ways away. Those two policemen will soon be missed. There'll be more to follow. Oh, that's too bad. Just when that old woman was so close to shelling out the big money. Say, hey, what about Lobo? Oh, he served his usefulness. We'll leave him here. He won't like that. Huh. He won't know we're gone until it's too late. Besides, I don't think he'll last too long. You know, that policeman put three bullets right in his chest. If that had happened to another guy, he'd have been finished right on the spot. Where is he now? I haven't seen him since he took that policeman to the mortuary room. All right, that hallway's clear. How do you feel now? Yeah. Okay, I guess. Well, if you feel okay, let's get out of this place then. Can't be too soon for me. Okay. Oh. Well, you're still a little woozy. I guess I am. All right, let's take it easy now. We'll make it. What can we do against that giant without guns? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I know I hit him when I shot, but he just didn't die. Yeah, I know. Now, this door looks familiar. Let's try it. That drape room again. You know this crazy room has more doors than a funhouse? There's my hat! Keep your voice down, will you? Those characters will find us soon enough. Look! in the draped room. It's the police. They got Lobo. Where are they now? Up in the draped room. Well, get up there and hold them off. Well, how? You've got a gun, haven't you? Oh, yes. Well, use it. We're trapped. No, we're not. If that jerk can hold them off long enough, you and I can get out to the mortuary room. He's a big one, all right. Any more of them? Well, there's at least three. A phony Swami and his girlfriend, who's a phony ghost. And they have another guy around here who's a phony ghost. Which way? Through those doors, the rather stage is our best bet. Hold it. We got him. Paul, are you all right? I'm okay. You guys go on ahead. I'll go back to the radio car. Only nick my arm. All right, let's get on with it. Dog, give us just that much more time. Good evening, Dr. Acula. We have been expecting you. Who are you? You ask who we are. Yet it was you who called for our return. 
This is impossible. I hired actors to play the dead. You're not my actors. Your powers were even stronger than you yourself realized. You have brought us back from the grave. Once every 13 years, when called by a strong medium such as you, we are given a brief 12 hours of freedom from our deep pit of darkness. Those few hours are almost gone. We must return to the grave. You will accompany us there. I've lost the key. I'll try the back door. Dr. Accolade is. Yeah, what about those? Yeah, there's a lot of things about this case I don't understand. We know he was a phony medium bilking people. Now he's dead. How'd he die? Where'd those bones come from? You say they weren't there when you and Kelton were here before? That's right. There they are. Maybe the bodies have gone back where they came from. Yeah, sure. The grave. Nuts. Say, what about the blonde girlfriend? You know, the phony ghost you were mentioning. Yeah, what about the girlfriend? Well, she's still around here someplace. Unless she's become a real ghost. 
file closed. The police had only opinions to the true ending. It was only Patrolman Kelton's guess that could be considered the closest. And now we return to our graves, the old and the new. And you may join us soon.